Get up your host, everybody. Yeah, how are we feeling? This is good. This is very good. Hello, my name is Josh. How are you guys feeling? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so one thing you should know about me is I'm a dude. I like I think a lot. Okay, I got a lot of thoughts in my head. Okay, side note, before I get started, I, I can't help but notice. This mic stand is a very accurate representation of what I look like in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Small observation. Anyway, what, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I think a lot. I do a lot of thinking. And one of the things I've been thinking about is I feel like if you're an adult, you should not be writing in cursive anymore. Like, there's no reason to be writing in cursive if you're an adult. You don't need to be writing a full letter in cursive and giving it to another human being. Because you don't need cursive after third grade. There's no point. Like, I remember learning cursive in third grade. I was so confused. I look at my teacher. I was like, why are we learning cursive? She's like, because you're going to use it for the rest of your life. Well, when was the last time you used cursive? Third grade. <laughs> because in elementary school, they're like, you're going to use cursive all the time in middle school. Then in middle school, like, no, you're going to use cursive all the time in high school. Then in high school, like, no, you're going to use cursive all the time in college. Then in college, you're like, nah, man. Times New Roman over everything. <laughs> And yo, you can always tell who really enjoys writing in cursive because they're the people who always try to find an excuse to write you something. Yo, like I texted my friend Nick once on a Friday night. I texted him, I was like, hey man, you wanna go out? You wanna go party or something? Three days later, I got a letter in cursive that said, hell yeah, dog. <laughs> Let's make it happen, let's do this. <laughs> uh, I'm a skinny dude, as you can tell, uh, but I managed to lose more weight since I become vegan, which means I spend a lot of money on food just to look like I need food. Yeah, it's a weird thing. The hardest thing about being vegan is that if you're out with your friends and it's late at night and you haven't eaten, you just got to accept that you're not eating. Why? Because vegetables got a bedtime, all right? You can't get food anywhere after 10 p.m. if you're vegan. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> and I've voiced my concerns about this to like legit vegans, like devout vegans, and they all say the same thing. They're like, Josh, you got to be prepared. You gotta bring snacks, you know? You gotta, you gotta bring snacks with you. Which is easier <laughs> said than done. Because the last time I did that, I was at a club, and a girl was twerking on me, and she's like, wow, you have a really big bulge. I said, nah, that's an apple. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing at all. <laughs> cool. Uh, one thing you guys should know about me is, uh, by day, I work as an accountant, which might be a surprise for some of you, because I have social skills. <laughs> I'm only, I'm only saying that because in accounting, all you do is stare at a computer screen. You don't really talk to other people, and it's really boring. Like, as a result, accounts are stereotyped to be very boring people. Like, one of my close friends, his name is Chris. He's an accountant. He comes up to me one day. He's like, Josh, I'm so happy because my girlfriend and I saved our relationship. We realized all we had to do was spice things up in the bedroom. I was like, spice things up? He's like, yeah, we're doing missionary now. I was like, you're doing missionary? He said, yeah, and next week we might even take off all our clothes. We're out of control, man. <laughs> I work as an accountant by day because ladies want a man they can do his taxes, you know? Right? And I do comedy by night because ladies want a man more interesting than a man doing taxes. <laughs> and people ask me all the time, like, Josh, what does it mean to be an accountant? What does it really mean to be an accountant? Being an accountant means sitting in a cubicle, analyzing income statements, reconciling bank accounts, processing invoices, and going home and taking it out on your family. That's exactly what it means. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. I'm only saying that because most of my coworkers hate their jobs, and I feel like that's common. I feel like a lot of us like, hate our jobs, you know, because our day jobs aren't really our first choice in career. You're like, I'm doing comedy. That's why I do comedy. Because when I do comedy, people tell me, Josh, you're smart, you're amazing, you're witty, you're talented, you're great. You know who doesn't tell me that? Carol in HR. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same world, you know? Uh, okay, cool. So I'm ha So th this table is here, right? So with th if this table was out the way, uh, you'd see that like I got really, you might be able to see, ma'am, I got really small legs. I got very skinny legs. Everyone's trying to look at my legs now. <laughs> I got very skinny legs because I'm what happens when a black man from Africa starts a family with a flamingo. That's <laughs> like... Like, my dream is to one day have a relationship where I could give my girlfriend piggyback rides instead of asking other guys to do it. That's the only thing I want. <laughs> you know, I used to get made fun of all the time when I was younger for having skinny legs. And I remember I had a bully who was, like, one year younger than me. His name was Peter. Horrible person, horrible personality. I hated this guy, okay? <laughs> and one time, I wore my shorts out at recess, and then Peter saw me. He's like, Josh, your legs are small and pathetic. You look like a little bird. And I cried. 
I went home. I was like, Mom, Peter keeps making fun of me at school. I don't know what to do about it. My mom was like, Joshua, because she's an African flamingo, right? <laughs> she's like, Joshua, you have to be a man. Stick up for yourself. Say something back. Be a man. I was like, OK, Mom, you're right. Let's do this. Break. <laughs> I went back to school the next day. I wore my shorts out of recess, and Peter saw me, and right on cue, he's like, Josh, your legs are small, and you look like a little bird. Those are pathetic. And I said, hey, both your parents are fat, and your mom has diabetes. <laughs> yeah, he started crying immediately. Right? <laughs> And he walked away, and I was so happy, I was so proud. But then two minutes later, I felt bad because I felt like that was a really harsh way to speak to my little brother. I had to tell him, though. <laughs> Let's see, what else do I want to say? Uh, I, I, oh, I'm in, a, I'm in a weird place right now because my name is Josh, and I've never met an old person with my name. Uh, just think about that for a second. Like, like I've met a Chester, a Charlie, a Clarence, but not a Joshua. Like, don't you find it a little bit strange that there are more trees named Joshua than old people? Like, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> These are the things I think about all the time. You know, I can see it now. They're going to take my name from me. I'm going to be really old. I'm going to run into an old friend from back in the day. They'll be like, oh, my goodness. After all these years, is that you, Josh? I'm like, nah. I go by Hildegard now. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, I love my name, okay? My name is Joshua Otusani. When you hear that name, you look at my face and think, oh, this dude's probably African. But on a piece of paper, my name looks Asian as hell. Right? I had a phone interview one time, and the lady on the other line was like, Otusani, that's such a beautiful name. Where is that from? I said, oh, it's from Nigeria. She said, what? Nigeria? Where in Asia is that? <laughs> All right, well, there we go. <laughs> she would have failed every one of these trivia questions. By the way. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, one thing you guys should know about me is I don't use traditional curse words in my speech. Like, the only word you ever hear me use is the word hell, because to me that's a place or a location, you know, like the fiery pit where Satan lives or Gary, Indiana. <laughs> I don't curse. <laughs> I don't use curse words, and it's very hard to maintain that in 2017 because cursing is so common. For example, the other day, there was a girl over at my place. We're watching a movie, The Lion King, classic. You gotta love it, right? <laughs> then after the movie, we're kissing, we're making out, you know, it's getting heated. Things are about to happen. In the heat of the moment, she leans in my ear. She goes, Josh, what do you want to do to me? I said, I would very much like to have sex with you. She's like, no, Josh. Don't say it like that. Say it to me dirty. I said, yo, why do I got to say it dirty? I thought I said it perfectly the first time. <laughs> She's like, Josh, if you don't say it dirty, you're not getting any. So I'm like, yo, like, I got to break my rule. Like, I got to do what needs to be done. I got to say what needs to be said. I don't want to let this opportunity slip out of my hands. I got to be a man. So I took a deep breath. I leaned into her ear with confidence, and I said, girl, I want to frick the crap out of you. <laughs> Yeah, I want to freak you so hard, girl. <laughs> she got up and left immediately, all right? It was, it was the end of the story. It's awful. Okay, cool. I really want to do this joke I in this room. Uh, I So, okay, when I was younger, I used to get my shoes at this place called Payless Shoes. Have you heard of this? <laughs> oh, yes. Payless Shoes. Home of the Adidas Shoes with four stripes. Yes, we, we all know this. Okay, we all know this. Great. Now, here's the thing. People make fun of Payless Shoes all the time. But here's one thing I'll respect about Payless Shoes is that their name is like the most honest name, period, <laughs> for a company. Like, it's so honest, you know? Because when you hear Payless Shoes, when you read Payless Shoes, you literally think lower quality shoes for a way cheaper price. It's amazing, and I respect that it's so honest. Like, why can't more companies be that honest? Like, why is it McDonald's just called, die, nigga? These are the questions <laughs> <laughs> that we should be asking. God, I just really want to do that joke for some reason. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. So I mentioned I mentioned my mom briefly a little bit ago. Uh, one thing you should know about her is that she thinks she's like the funniest person alive. So like she thinks she's so funny, and that, it's cute, but it's also a little bit annoying, especially when you're trying to do stand-up comedy, you know. So I'll give you an example of one time I was telling jokes in a similar setting to this, and my mom called me in the middle of my set, and at the time I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna answer the phone put on a speakerphone, 
and see what happens. No big deal, right? So I answer the phone, I put on speakerphone, I say, hey mom, she's like, Joshua! I was like, whoa, mom, uh, you're on speakerphone right now. She said, what? I said, mom, you're on speakerphone right now, I'm telling jokes. She's like, you're telling jokes? I said, yeah, you know, telling jokes, you know, trying to be a comedian, you know, really trying to be a stand-up comedian. She's like, Joshua! Are you trying to chase a dream you'll never achieve? <laughs> hey, that's all I want to do, y'all. Thank you very much. Y'all have been great. Thank you.